but for the death threats, it was sent to my mom's place, mm -hmm. and um, my mom didn't know. She just like, oh, it's your letter, you know. She just passed it to right. me, and I read it. I was like, okay, how did this person find the address to my house and also the unit number? Today we've got social media sensation, model and cosplayer Ruru Sama here with us. Ruru, welcome! Hello guys, <laughs> it's Ruru. Nice to see you guys. I'm very happy to be here today. And right now we also have clinical psychologist Jeannie Chu here with us. Jeannie, welcome! Ooh. Hi, thank you for having me today. Yeah, so Jeannie is going to provide uh, all kinds of insights for us, mental wellness insights for us for today as well, okay? Uh, well, let's just dive into it. I want to find out, first of all, how you got into cosplay in the first place and, and what is that community like? Um, actually, it's just a hobby. Yeah. And like, I think I was, I really like anime. So mm -hmm. like, from young, you know, you kind of watch like Pokemon and stuff. And then yeah. you just, one day I was like, maybe I want to be one of them instead. So Ooh. I decided to get a costume and okay. then I tried to hide it from my mom. <laughs> so I hid it. No, I actually like tried to like hide it inside the cupboard, like the deep really? end of the Oh cupboard. my gosh, okay. And she found it. Right. But she didn't say anything. She's just like, oh, it's a cute costume. I'm like, okay. So I didn't <laughs> have to hide it the, from her. What was the costume of? I mean, do you still remember what it was of? Um, it's... Any from Kagero Project. It's a dark history. Let's okay. Do not pull up a picture. Thank you. Okay. No do not pictures. pull up a picture. <laughs> do not pull up a picture. Warning. Thanks for the ample warning. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, because of that, then I started cosplaying. Okay. Just um, a friend was like, hey, you want to try cosplaying? Yeah. It's just a fun thing. Yeah. I okay. think more people think that uh, I planned to do this. Right. But it's not. Okay. How can you plan this? this yeah, is no. No, you can't. Yeah, yeah, you probably fall into it. Just, just, just like everything else, isn't it? I think <laughs> it's more of like, I can't, I enjoy anime. Okay. That's why I enjoy doing cosplay as well, because okay. I like makeup. Mm. So I was like, what better way to like, yeah. spend all my money on costumes <laughs> and makeup yeah. to be something else, to be a 2D character. Yeah, why not? You have over, you know, 1 million followers on TikTok, almost a million on Instagram. People think Ooh. like, you know, it's, yeah, congratulations on all those great numbers, man. Um, people all think like, you know, it's like, all fun and games and all that, but there's actual work that goes on behind it. So I want to know like how you sort of stay ahead of the curve, sort of like continue to be creative. I think the trick to be creative, people hate to hear this, but is you just have to do it. You okay. have to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And basically creative, being creative all the time means there are days where you're not going to be creative and you're just running on like, just whatever you're used to. Yeah. So it's basically creating a habit of constantly being creative. So even on the days where you're not creative, you could be still creative. Mm. When I was really like chonging, you know, yeah. when I was chonging, mm. it's it's really every day. Right. Like, at least you take out like six hours of your day just filming whatever, whatever and anything. You could yeah. take like two hours just to film one dance TikTok that no one cares about. Yeah. Because it's just how you, you, you see yourself. It's like this take is not good, that take is not good too. Mm. So after two hours, you're like, oh, finally, this take is good. Yeah. But at least you got to that part. Exactly. It sounds to me like actually um, the consistency right, yes. and the passion in what you do actually help. Is that yeah, right? I think the consistency is what helps the most. Like, you know, you can't, you can't possibly, you know, build a, mo build a mountain in like a day. And it sounds to me like the consistency somewhat um, make this, you know, whatever that you're doing, it becomes a habit. Is yes. that what it is? Oh, that's actually a perfect way to explain it. Mm. Yeah. Like it becomes a habit. So like, you know, it gets easier over day right. to just do it. You're like, oh, yeah, today I just wake up and have to do like two TikToks because it's my job. On days when you you just don't feel like doing anything, you know, how do you then perk yourself up? By working actually doing it's, even more work right yeah. yeah actually it's very weird but i have i have days where i feel like absolute like shit and then i just don't, don't want to do anything but like i think going back to the like the routine of mm -hmm. like you know at least making one video i feel better about myself right but i know sometimes it's not a really a good thing because it's like going back to work again mm -hmm. but i think it has greatly helped me or it has become such a routine that i couldn't just like let's not work today you know like, let's not do this. It makes me feel uncomfortable not working. Right. Yeah. So it sounds to me like doing something is better than doing nothing. Yes. Right. But at least that's for me. Mm. Yeah. I know some people really need some time off. I think I do need time off too. Mm -hmm. But not as often as I think that I need to actually. 
I think like, um, yeah, but also like you're super young. So I guess, you know, like you're in that <laughs> mentality, m- mentality, yeah. right? You know yeah. how it is? Is there energy? Yeah, it's like yeah. that 20 some, early 20 something energy. I, I really believe that too. You you have a lot of mm-hmm. that when you're like in your 20s. You're like, yeah, I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. And then, and you should, you should, because you've got the energy and you've got that brain space to just like go for it and just so show, right? So you're saying right? um, in a couple of years, I'll be like, no, <laughs> like, I'm <laughs> done with this. At some point you'll be like, you'll taper out a little bit and go like, okay, yeah. I'm just going to take some time for myself a little bit yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. but you'll still be you know high i mean like right up there doing your thing but i think you'd like take some time to relax a little bit um i was reading a little something about how you struggle with body image issues can you talk a little bit about that to us um yeah what what you go through with that i think the biggest thing about social media is that you're putting yourself on a platform where people are open to criticize even though I wouldn't say they have no right to, but they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, if I'm, if you're a girl on the internet, some people will definitely comment on your looks, your body, how your feet looks like, how your hands look like, why do you have weird ears? Why do you have weird mouth? That Mm. kind of thing. So there's a lot of like, you know, that kind of like, just oddly specific comments yep. and mm-hmm. like that you didn't expect in a certain type of videos. It's like I could be posting like a random rant and people will be talking about why does your hair look so ugly today? You know, that kind right. of thing. Yeah. It's totally out of the bo- out, out of the, you know, the topic that I was talking about, but you yep. know, comments like this do happen. And on days that I'm not feeling that great, mm-hmm. of course, oh yeah, on days that I'm not feeling that great, it would probably affect me yeah. like quite bad. Like there, I think most people, I think for me, it's like most of the comments that come is like, um, you're flat, you're mm. too, you're too skinny in this video. You're too, suddenly the next video, you're too fat. You have gained weight. And then your face is, I don't know who likes this face. Ugh. Or like your, your, your dad didn't teach you how oh to, te- how to act on the internet. Oh my God. Or like, um, I, I have read this comment before, which is like, um, I'm surprised your dad didn't rape you or like stuff like that. It's oh. actually quite disturbing. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, um, disturbing. I think about this kind of topic is a bit hard to talk about online, especially because my audience mostly are men. Mm. And I feel like I'm not saying that all men, but mm. like when I say stuff like this, it becomes like I'm trying to attack a gender when I'm not. You know, yep. so no matter what, I try not to address it. But when I don't address it or like I don't rent it to someone yeah. or I just keep it inside, I explode. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I just ended up crying at home for like two hours and then I'm like, okay, time to make some TikToks again. Wow. For <laughs> the same people who just oh my God. destroy me two hours ago. But I guess, but a lot of people would say that this is part and parcel of the job. I think it's still very difficult no matter what because we're all human anyway. Mm. I mean, it doesn't matter that we're out there putting out stuff, right? But I think that's really, really tough and I don't know how you deal with it. I mean, like, you, you say you cry for two hours and then like, but are you really okay after yeah. that? You know, like, does it manifest in other things? I don't know, like, does it come out, you know, in, in other things where you get mad at something else? You know, I mean, because I figure it's so hard. It's, it's not, it can't be easy. I feel like I just cry and like okay, try let to let out. the emotion out mm-hmm. and then after that try to take it as a joke i feel okay. like i've done that mm-hmm. multiple times yeah which i'm not sure at this point if it's healthy or not you know, one <laughs> day it's gonna creep <laughs> up somewhere right Ruru, and it's gonna be like it's gonna come like a monster and go <laughs> and you're just gonna explode on a, on a couple of tiktoks you know i don't know I, i'm not sure but um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think it takes some some decent self-control to not just explode as someone who just yes, comments right. like weird stuff on your on your platform yeah and especially as a as a young younger woman on the internet yeah. i feel like as much as like i have the audience to do it but i'm also at a platform where at a stage where like people can just criticize right like yeah. even if they even if they can they shouldn't yes type yeah. of comments yeah yeah I'm actually quite impressed that, you know, what I'm hearing is, um, is just, I was just sieving out, you know, what are the coping strategies that you actually utilize? And those, there was good like ones. quite a few quite there, a few, actually. Yeah. Um, it's actually emotion-focused coping, if I may share. So basically, she focuses on what she needs, ventilation, crying. Mm, yeah, I need to cry. That actually helps, right? However, I'm just wondering, do you have any other, you know, ways to cope? Like, do you talk to anybody? You know, do you, um, because it sounds to me like you have to suppress a lot. You, you can't really talk about it on, on the media, right? So 
Yeah. Actually, I have been on therapy since like, I think a year, I, th- I think I stopped like half a year ago. But like, for that year, we were concentrating on stuff like this, you know, un- undoing my childhood trauma, yada, yada, all this kind of thing. But I think when I spoke to the therapist about this mm-hmm. problem, they said that I should, <laughs> I don't know if this is right or wrong, but like, um, she said that um, thinking about having thoughts is kind of like, how to stop yourself from going to like a maniac zone is to just stop. Mm. So right. it's it sounds wrong to most people, but I think that I've adapted it quite well, which is like, I know I'm spiraling and I can feel mm. myself spiraling. And I feel like most people do. It's like, you don't become, you don't explode all of a sudden. There is a build up and you know it yourself. So it's, to, it's basically when can you tell yourself that this is it. I'm going to stop being so crazy right now. Let's just, you know, wash our face or like take a shower or right. like, or like, um, go to dance class mm. or something like that. I think dance is probably one of the things that I escape to or like kind of an escaping mechanism okay. because like, so for example, like people like to comment on my body, right? So I would go to dance class, which is like, I like to go to those, you know, heel class or like, you know, mm. girl style, which is, you know, you kind of feel confident, a little sexy, right. whatever, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. I think every woman needs that, you know, mm. to tap into your kind of sexy energy. Yep. So because I go to that and then like, sometimes I will post like dance videos online and then they would again, you know, comment about my body, but at least it's like, I know it's some, it's a secondary comment. Mm. Like they could say, they could say that my dance is shit, but that would be the first, like the, the primary comment to the video, right? But most people will be quite supportive. You'll be like, oh, you look so good, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And like, I feel like a lot of girls get empowered from like seeing other girls doing confident things. So I think that it was a good practice or a good call right. from me to do that. If I may comment on that, I'm not sure whether you've seen her dance. She dances yeah. very well or she dances very well. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Not you guys watching my thing. It is. <laughs> and, and I really liked it there because um, she talked about rumination. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. what she actually shared, right, Ruru, is that you you have very great self-awareness. Mm-hmm. You need to be aware of what your thoughts are before you can say stop, right? Yeah. So And, and you did that. And um, what I really like is that she also focused on something that she's doing well. You know, yeah. and, and the dancing is kind of like a platform where everybody can, you know, give yeah, you support. Yes. Even though there are some other comments, you can kind of push that away. You can focus on the positive ones. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about the stuff that you do on social media, right? Is there anybody that you um, compare yourself against or do you sort of like look up to or kind of like go like, okay, maybe that's more of what I want to do or is there, you know, that sort of thing? I think... <clears throat> I feel like when I look on social media, it's just all pretty girls, you know, hot girls, sexy girls, cute girls. So I think I, because of, I think the entertainment industry in itself is kind of like, you know, it's very looks focused. Yep. To some degree, even though you're a personality person, you still, you know, get surrounded by a lot of like amazing, pretty talented people all the time. So I think that, I think because being in a Korean agency before, like, I do look up to a lot of Korean idols, mm. like just whether it's makeup or styling or <clears throat> body, yeah. you just end up comparing a little bit subconsciously, not even like trying to. Yeah. So like, I feel like that's the effect of like just constantly scrolling mm. on the internet and seeing many perfect women <laughs> around the world, <laughs> <laughs> not only locally, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's kind of tricky, isn't it, to navigate mm. that space, especially at a young age, I feel like. Because you're like, you know, obviously impressionable and it actually it doesn't matter how old you get. You kind of go like, yeah. wow, that's so nice. I want that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's kind of hard. I mean, no matter what age. Yeah. I, I think comparing um, comparison is actually very normal. Mm-hmm. So I do that too. I, I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I, we all do it. Everyone yeah. does it. <laughs> When I look at Instagram, Facebook, I'm like, oh, how come this girl is so pretty, you know? And and I think comparison is really normal. Um, as long as, you know, you, you know that that comparison um, doesn't define you, you know, as a person, in a sense. So your self-worth is still kind of preserved, in that sense. Um, you do know that there are people better than you, but then you don't get carried away by that. And if you can actually use that as a source of, source of motivation, mm-hmm. right, to better improve yourself and then really create a positive image that can be really beneficial actually yeah 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 that's right i'm reading about um you getting like death threats and all that i mean i think that's just kind of crazy really out there uh, and obviously frightening as well 
well. Um, how did you deal with that? Because I think that's even that's even worse, you know, than like sort of commenting on whatever the um, videos you put out in your body and whatever. I think the worst part of it all is that it was sent to my mom's house. Oh. And I was living oh. with my parents at that time. Mm. So right now I'm living alone, which is also scary because I got stalker problems. Right. But like, I'm just gotten better. Which is, after you call the police on them a few times, they just stop, you know. Mm. And it's Singapore, so Singapore is a great country for this kind of thing, you know. They're just relatively safe. Yeah. And, but for the death threats, it was sent to my mom's place. Mm. And um, my mom didn't know. She just like, oh, here's your letter, you know, she just passed it to right. me. And I read it, I was like, okay, how did this person find the address to my house mm. and also the unit number? Mm. You know, I think... It's easy to know like kind of where someone lives in Singapore, but it's not easy to know exactly which yeah. unit it is. That's why it was so scary at that point of time. But I still didn't respond. I didn't do anything about it. And then um, they sent a second letter to my mom's house. And then I told my mom about it. And she's just like, mm, yeah, there's a lot of crazy people out there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's kind of cool, like yeah. really chill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a very my mom reply. She's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just do do whatever you want. Like, just just ignore it. Right. Like, we're gonna be fine. Okay. This is Singapore. She's just basically, this is Singapore. Yeah. What do you think you can do? And I'm like... <laughs> I mean, okay, I, I get that. Yeah. But then, like, it's kind of scary still, right? I mean, like, you know, for somebody yeah, to sort no, of send stuff like that. Yeah, no, but this is not the scariest thing. I was... Okay, so I had an internship in Japan. Okay. And then, like, I was away from the house, right? So some guy appeared to my house. Like, like my parents' house. Like at the door and was asking, hey, where is Ru? Wow. And like, my, it was my grandmother who opened the door at the time, so like my parents didn't know what happened. Yeah. And then uh, after a while, they realized something was wrong. Like, how can someone like, by the way, they live in a private condo estate, okay. so like, there is gated. Yeah. So how did he even get into the mm. premises in the first place? So um, they checked security cameras and they confirmed that there was a guy who did come up by the staircase and not the lift wow. to get into the like the apartment that's i think that is my main motivation to like move out of my parents house actually yeah. one of it um i didn't feel like i was extremely like traumatized mm -hmm. but i feel it's more of like i don't want to worry my parents over this kind of thing like this is my problem like, why do you have to bring it to my family? Okay, like, yeah. And I feel like a lot of people on the internet like to talk about, like, your mother, your father. Like, yeah. Let's talk about, very quickly, I think we'll wrap this up here, um, your support circle. I think that I've came to uh, a part of my life where I actually cut off a lot of people. Um, just purely, not, not because I have hard feelings, but just because we don't serve each other anymore. It's like, it's good to have a few acquaintances here and there, but like truly those who are close to me are like just really just a couple. But mostly I say my main family, my main support circle is my family. Mm -hmm. And then after that comes like um, maybe the people that I work with because I spend a lot of time with them. And like they're extremely quirky, weird I would use weird, okay, weird people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are very weird people that has a lot of um, positive um, input on life, which is something that I feel like I could really learn from them. Yeah. Like, they're just like, everything is just happiness. Like, mm -hmm. everything, there's a positive thing. Everything there is, oh, at least you're doing this, I guess. You know, at least we have pizza now. Okay, let's eat. Hee hee, haha. You know, that kind of people. Yeah. So I used to surround myself when I was younger. It's like a lot of people that are very angry, mm -hmm. very sad, or like just like trying to ruin their lives or like just not happy with whatever they have. And I think that I've now found a better group or like I've narrowed down the group to someone, to the people who, you know, brings the correct energy for me. Especially when I, I feel like I've been talking about work this whole time, but I really do feel like because it's my priority in life right now, I think it's so important, especially people that I work with, to have mm. like similar mindsets as what I try to achieve, like what I want to get in my life. Yeah. Mm. I think, yeah, they're, they're weirdos. But I really <laughs> enjoy their company. And I get to meet a lot of crazy, talented, pretty people inside this industry too. You know, yeah. it's like I go one, you know, I recently got invited to Conquest, which is an event in um, Manila. And, and so many talented people. 
crazy talent and like very dedicated to their work and also still somehow extremely grounded and yeah i think that that's the kind of people i think i just try to surround people surround the people that i want to become i mm. guess yeah i don't know for you gina i mean i could relate to her in a sense the older i get you know i i choose quality over quantity yeah right mm. and i choose people who have the same like maybe aspiration you mm-hmm. know and interest as me because that's where i connect and i and i like that you know yeah. for you you kind of being selective and and create that boundary again right yeah because yeah. i simply i think i i had a experience where um it wasn't a falling out but mm. it was an action that was done uh with a friend that made me feel like i have to drop this friendship now like it's not what i can hand- what i can emotionally handle for her right now like we could still be friends but i think we need some space between us right mm. now and i think that i'm quite I think I'm quite a direct person which not I feel like some people appreciate but also it may rub off the wrong way you know to some more sensitive people but I think yeah I'm quite direct in terms of like okay let's just try to work things out or this will not work out let's move on first mm. you know we can come back to it 2 years later when mm. we both grow up a little more It's pretty cool. You know, you're only 24, but man, you've got yeah. like a super grounded girl, like yes. really like you know, shout yeah. out to my mother who <laughs> <laughs> to your cool mom yes. and a cool dad, man. <laughs> my I think my mom would always remind me. Yeah. Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, yeah. that's a pretty cool household, right? Along the way, I realized that oh, you know, if I don't solve this problem on my own, n- there's no one else that's gonna solve it for me. So I have to fix this. Yeah. So I I feel that that kind of builds um, resilience.